All right, we're back on Capital tonight. The video game industry is hoping to get a production tax credit into this year's final budget agreement after the governor vetoed a similar measure last year because it wasn't part of the budget. But the Senate and Assembly included the credit in their one house resolutions this year. Several colleges have joined that push as well. With me in the studio now to explain more are Guha Bala, the head of VLAN, VLAN Ventures, and Benjamin Chang from RPI. Also joining us from Rochester this evening is Jennifer Hinton from Magic Spell Studios at RIT. I want to thank you all for joining me. Jennifer, thank you. Thank you for having us. Uh, Jennifer, I, I, I do want to start with you. Just give us a sense for considering that there has been a, a, a real push for uh, technology uh, jobs in upstate New York over the last several years, uh, from Buffalo to Rochester to right here in the capital region. Uh, just give us a sense for why this tax credit is worthy for this industry. That's a great question. I think it's a great time. It's a great opportunity. Here in Rochester and all throughout upstate New York, we are educating the next, uh, the next wave of, of video game developers. And it's very important to us. Um, personally, as an educator, we would love to see the, talent, the students that we are educating. We would like to keep that talent right here in upstate New York. At RIT specifically, we are home to the second, um, the second ranked program in game design and development in the country as ranked by the Princeton Review. Currently, we, uh, we bring in 180 students a year into that program, and right now we're losing about two-thirds of those students to, to other states. And it is very important to us that we keep that talent that we've educated right here and contributing to, to our economy. Ben, tell me a little bit about the uh, argument that you guys, or, or, or discussion that you guys have had with state lawmakers on this legislation. I think last time this came up in June, only, only two members voted against it. Uh, when you talk to lawmakers, what do they tell you about it? Well, well they tell us that they're, uh, they're actually really supportive of this. Uh, there's uh, a real understanding uh, of the value of the industry, um, the size of the industry and the way that this has grown uh, worldwide um, and the strengths that we have here in the state. Um, and there's uh, really increasing interest uh, in supporting it and really taking it to the next level here. Um, Guha, just how effective can a tax credit like this be when it comes to creating jobs, which is ultimately I think what lawmakers and the governor even would be most interested in is seeing some sort of result from something like this. The film tax credit, which this seems very similarly based on, mm -hmm. has provided for really an explosion of Hollywood activity in New York State. They've also been criticized for their cost and whether there's any sort of benefit for the overall New York economy. Mm -hmm. uh, a program like the one that's being proposed could be extremely effective. Uh, and it's not a program for every state at every time. Uh, because New York has the fundamentals in terms of the raw talent coming out of the universities, it has proven success stories in each of the upstate locations in, in greater Rochester area. There are proven uh, game developers that are competing at a national and international level here in the capital region. Uh, we also have those uh, in downstate as well. Uh, because we have those fundamentals, a demand side stimulation like the tax credit that's, uh, um, um, that's proposed here with private sector leadership could be extraordinarily effective. This sort of program has worked extremely well in Texas. Uh, in Austin, a similar measure went in place in 2006, and it took the game industry jobs in Texas from about 450 to about 4,500 by 2014, so almost a 10 times increase in the number of jobs created. Now, these jobs are really the kind of high-tech jobs that upstate communities need to not only thrive today economically, but to find the future of these communities, sort of 25 to 35-year-old uh, um, uh, tech jobs, creative jobs with an average salary of about $100,000 a year, uh, really which make their homes here. These are not portable jobs. These are jobs that the average tenure in these companies tends to be anywhere from five to 10 years. Uh, Jennifer, students in your program, would they be interested in staying in New York if there were jobs in, in, in the video game industry available to them? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, many of them have already chosen to stay here and are contributing to local companies both here in Rochester and Troy but I think we could employ a lot more of our students and again keep that talent here if there were more opportunities for them in the state of New York. Um, I, I, I do want to ask you guys just uh, you know about 
and, and, I, and I don't want to sound ignorant about video games because I've played video games, <laughs> but um, the uh, idea of subsidizing video game jobs, of subsidizing a video game industry, to some mm -hmm. taxpayers, they may look at that and wonder why their tax dollars mm -hmm. are going to, you know, Super Mario and Xbox and, mm -hmm. and, and all that. Just, you know, I I is there um, a concern there that you've heard at all about uh, tax money going to an industry that maybe some folks don't necessarily understand or want to pay for? Mm -hmm. So I think the actual, uh, the details matter in terms of the way the actual tax bill is architected and what it requires. Mm -hmm. um, this is not a tax break to say, let's make Mario a little cheaper. Uh, the entire architecture of this is to um, drive the growth of the number of jobs in each of these regions so they become sustainable economic clusters. That means reach a critical mass of these jobs where even without the incentive, the reinvestment becomes organic. Uh, and we're subcritical in each of our geographies for uh, the number of companies. Now, the interesting thing about uh, our industry is uh, uh, it exists in some high-cost locations like Silicon Valley. It exists there because there are so many game developers there that investment goes there in search of talent. If we can get that, uh, we, we have all the necessary ingredients to get that in the capital region, in Rochester, certainly in Brooklyn, uh, that if we get the critical mass of development talent, critical mass of companies there, then even without the incentive, uh, the industry will be going like a flywheel. So this is really a time-based uh, uh, stimulus on demand uh, rather than a subsidy on the actual job. It also requires private sector leadership. The only way these things work is if the companies come, they hire the people, they spend the money, they complete the projects, and then afterwards they get a bit of a refund on part of the costs. Ben, I kind of want to ask you a similar question that I just asked Jennifer, but just how rapidly um, is a program like the one that you're uh, a part of at RPI, how rapidly is something like that growing? Does that attract students who maybe a generation ago wouldn't have thought of going to a school like RPI, which I think traditionally mm -hmm. we think of as, a, as an engineering school? Absolutely. Um, it, uh, it's been one of the fastest growing programs um, um, at RPI. Uh, the, uh, the idea of a higher education degree in video game design and development is still fairly new, um, but as you've seen, there's hundreds of programs all across, uh, all across the country, um, and many of the leading programs here in the state of New York, uh, including RIT, RPI, and NYU, um, and, and others. Um, there's, uh, uh, there's a tremendous interest in it as a technological uh, degree um, as a degree around invention and innovation, um, a way of tackling some of the most challenging problems uh, from a computer science perspective, and also um, a kind of a creative uh, career, an opportunity to really make something new, to tell new stories, and create new worlds. Uh, Jennifer, out in Rochester, I will uh, close with you this evening. Just give us a sense for getting a tax credit like this, having something like that in place, would you see jobs that we wouldn't necessarily have seen a while ago coming to Rochester? And uh, just what sort, of, what sort of employees would be attracted to something like that? Absolutely. Well, just like Ben said, you know, a number of years ago, there was no such thing as a degree program in game design and development. And we've seen the growth there. We're certainly seeing the growth in the industry, and we expect that the jobs will come. The industry follows the talent, and the talent is right here in Rochester, and we'd like to keep it here here we'd like to put the talented students that we've educated to work and i think this is really the future of the tech industry here in upstate new york and we'd like to to utilize these talented students and and local developers to really kickstart the the economy this is an investment in in students it's certainly an investment in the state of new york and i think we will all benefit from this investment okay thank you very much i want to thank you both very much Thanks as for well having. for joining us this evening